Hi, this is Eric Smith. Time to do another quick look video. I thought I would do it from Acts chapter 4, verses 27 and 28. And the word of God reads this way. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. In Acts chapter 4, you have the account of Peter and John being detained, so to speak, by the chief priests and elders. And they were telling Peter and John not to preach in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's when um, they basically told them, listen, we're supposed to obey God rather than man. We're going to preach the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John went back to their companions, the other, the, disciples, the other disciples, and told them what the chief priests and elders had said to them. And then from verse 23 to verse 31, you have Peter, John, and the other disciples actually crying out to the Lord, giving praise to the Lord. When you get to verse 27 and 28, they say something that is very interesting, and it talks about the compatibilism of God, God's sovereign will and man's responsibility. I want you to catch it. it you also see it in Acts 2.23, but it says it here too. It says for or because, and that is hearkening back to verses 25 and 26, where they actually quote uh, King David from the Psalms. But it says, for or because, truly against your holy servant Jesus. So he's, they're saying Jesus, though he's the second person of the Trinity, is also the holy servant of God, whom you anointed. Notice it is God that chose the Son to do the will of the Father. Both Herod and Pontius Pilate. So they're mentioning both Herod and Pontius, Pontius Pilate part of the Roman government that was against Jesus Christ. With the Gentiles, so that includes anybody in the Roman Empire, anybody that was part of um, going against Jesus. And it says, and the people of Israel. Listen, there were some people that followed Jesus Christ, but when Jesus Christ was about to be crucified, everybody seemed to turn against him except um, that few group of disciples and apostles that believed in Jesus Christ, but others just turned against him. Unfortunately, that's how it is. Jesus was popular when he was healing people and he was preaching uh, the word of God and he seemed to be against the authorities, but as soon as he was crucified, everybody scattered. But notice that all of them, it says, were gathered together. They all got together to do what they did to Jesus Christ. And then verse 28 says, they were gathered together to do whatever your hand now, this is God's hand, and when it says your hand, it's talking about God's power, God's ability, um, what God was going to do. It says your hand and your purpose, and this was God's purpose as well, determined before to be done. So who determined that Jesus Christ would go on the cross? It is God himself. It's God the Father determined this. But notice in his determination and his purposes and his plan, because it says his hand did it, notice that blame was not taken away from who? Herod, Pontius Pilate, the Gentiles, the people of Israel. They were all gathered together. They did what they wanted to do because they hated the Lord Jesus Christ. But it was still in God's plans. It was still in his purposes. It was still in his power. And it was him that determined it all. Dear Christian, Jesus Christ did not go to the cross by accident. It's not a plan B, C, D. It isn't luck. It isn't chance. It is determined by God. But in God's determination, he used the sinners that hated Jesus to do his ultimate plan. And that was to send Jesus Christ to the cross, to die on the cross for sinners, and to raise again on the third day. This is all part of the glorious gospel that we preach to sinners that God determined before he, ter before he even created in Genesis 1-1. And that's a wonderful thing. So this is Acts chapter 4, verse 27 and 28. I just wanted to do a quick look to talk about God determining and then man 
doing what they wanted to do in God's determination. It doesn't make man a robot. It doesn't make him a puppet. Listen, these folks wanted to kill Jesus Christ. But if we think it's just luck that he went to the cross, the time that he went to the cross, and it's not part of God's purposes and plans, then we don't understand the sovereignty of God, and we don't understand God's grand purpose to send his son on the cross to die for sinners. John 3.16 would mean nothing if God didn't plan it from the beginning of time. As always, if the videos on this channel have encouraged your Christian walk, and edified you in any way whatsoever, but you have not subscribed to my channel yet and you want to, hit the button. If you want to leave any comments, please do so, but please don't be snarky. Please do not be profane. We want to be Christ-like in everything we say and do as Christians. And until we do another quick look, remember something. God is in sovereign control. He has a purpose and plan that he determined from the beginning of time, from Genesis 1-1 to the end of Revelation. And we have his revealed purpose in scripture. But God works in ways that we don't even understand. Compatibilism is tough to understand. How can God be sovereign and man freely do what he wants to do? Well, man is only freely going to do what they, he wants to do as a slave to sin. And God will use that for his ultimate purposes. And you know what that ultimate purpose was? To send Jesus Christ to the cross to die for sinners so that they may be saved. It's a wonderful plan and God's wonderful power. He determined it to be and we need to praise him because of that. They were doing that when Peter and John went to the other disciples and we need to do that today as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and God bless.